like the idea of the metaverse and how you get around now I was actually very much I fought against us staffing up a metaverse team at Oculus <laughs> because I thought that that was going to be a disaster because we don't know what we're doing well enough yet yeah, and yeah. you know and that's always a problem with a well-funded company it's like let's yeah. put 30 people on this problem and see what happens and you know what happens is you generally get a mess and a lot of internal problems I you know the and metaverse is such a you know a vague, it means different things to, to different, different people. people. Yeah. And yeah. you need to, you need clarity of purpose. And I would I would try to get some of that as like what exactly do we mean? And there was still lots of hand waving and 
and not going on. So I'm happy that there has not been an effort to, you know, to do that. I mean, I've got some of my sneaky little under the radar plans I, <laughs> going on in, in some direction. If you do it's all right. Yeah. You don't need to go off the side yeah. You know that I, you know that might wind up being foundational for some of that, but that's not the product. You know, we don't want to go off and try to build second life, but better in some way. I, you know, that's that's not the. I'm, that's not a driving high value proposition now. Yeah, yeah. You know, there are things that people definitely want to do where you show someone and say, this is great, I want more of this. Where metaverse is something that's like, oh, I think that might be neat, but I can't quite, you know, say what exactly are you going to be doing in the metaverse? What's going to be great that makes you want to do that every day? And Second Life is instructional in, in a lot of ways where it's, there's a class of people that really enjoyed that. I was never one of them where, you know, I would go into Second Life and wander around it's like okay you know what do I go go do right now I see people doing things but it's almost like you wanted to be led a little bit more for it where Oh, okay. You know, an argument can be made that oh, something that? like Minecraft is much more the metaverse than something like Second Life, where it has user-generated content, it has portals between different areas, it has gameplay in it, something that you actually do. And I've always thought that that's always been my take on building the larger things is you make something neat and you let it grow into the bigger things, where there's a uh, kind of a, a software design phrase called the architecture astronaut, which is somebody that wants to be so high up above it looking down at these grand concepts, moving them around, and that's, I, you know, I'm more of an architecture plumber, where I want to be down <laughs> there doing the things that carries the, the water and the electricity to the different places there, because that 50, that, and the people that were around in the 90s saw so much of that about the people that had these grand visions about how society was going to be changed by virtual reality, and it all, all was such bullshit, you know, it's like, none of that led to anything, and I dug out some of the old books from the 90s, and I was like reading some of these academic journals about cyberspace and all of that, and you know, it, and it's abusing to look through it, where this was not the direction that, you know, that led to the breakthrough, and you know, the, the direction that is leading to the breakthrough is crass commercialization. <laughs> it was not the, you know, those kind of high, high, uh, high spirited and high minded discussions about things about how we're going to build a new world for everybody to, um, you know, to yeah. empower themselves. Well, I think once it becomes more ubiquitous, you open it up it'll for happen people. Automatically. Yeah, it'll happen. That's, that's where yeah. all of the good things that happen are with, you yeah. know, with electronics and the web. It happened not because AOL had the perfect plan for how to yeah. build all of that. It happened because <laughs> it got out to everybody and you reach quantity, yeah. has a quality all of its own and things that people would never sit down in a committee and say, this is going to be really valuable. Yeah. Uh, you know, blogs or message boards or things yeah. like that where I... It's it's just got it. I don't I don't have the hubris to think that I'm going to figure out all the things that are going to be valuable for people. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, talking about metaverse, the toy contest winners show that the display of the game VR is just fine. I was I was really happy. I with really that love that, that one with the bridge. Uh, there's so yeah, there's so much stuff there where I, I was very much inspired by watching those. You know, I'd go through and I'd judge all of them, and I'd be sitting around just like looking at these. And it felt like like a frozen glimpse of the future because you could see this yeah. and I'm stuck here, but yeah, it feels real and I want to just walk forward. I, I want to see, I want to see those in light field. Yeah. yeah, when I, I will be able to see those in light field. So they have Otoy has some I of them rendered to, to a light field right it, now. They told me they should be here, but yeah. I don't know when and where. So they're you basically <laughs> just have to find Jules and Alyssa. They're around <laughs> somewhere, but I. So the problem right now is the light fields are still lower fidelity. I the. The stereo cube maps that we use in 360 photos, that is absolutely the peak of the display quality. That's display limited there, right, where yeah. things that are being rendered, um, like on, uh, you know, even when you're rendering it on a uh, on a Rift or something with much higher processing power, it's a lower resolution display and it's being filtered a lot more to do the light field stuff. Now the light fields are great because you can look at that and you can do this and you can look, you know, you can look around a corner in the light field, which is awesome. But it is a little fuzzier, you know, it's, it doesn't have the super crispness of that. And also, the other thing that I want to see in those is I want wow. audio. I wanted like a music <laughs> soundtrack for a lot of these things. And also videos. Uh, I'm really looking forward for light field videos because uh, I really like videos on the Gear VR, but it's always a bit frustrating because it's never so, the again, right idea. Otoy so, Otoy has a demo of a kind of novel thing where uh, it's a gimmick, but it's still pretty amazingly cool where, so we've got this peak resolution, these 1536 res cube maps, and that's 
that's the optimal resolution for all of these, but we can only video decode at most a 4K by 2K, 30 frames per second stream, which winds up being these, basically it's a 1K by 1K cube resolution that we can decode on video. But uh, what they did was they, they took some uh, some really neat content and they just rendered out like 300 cube maps and they ASTC compressed them. And so it's this short, it's like, I'm calling it a VR vine. It's like this three second little thing that happens and, and it's awesome, you know, because it has that same super crisp quality and then things move, you know, things run across the screen. And you're like, what was no. that? Yeah. <laughs> what was that? And I think that there's, it, it becomes these quirky little creative domains where already the stereo cube map is this quirky domain where nobody had made something like that before as a, as a static piece of art. So I think there's this new quirky little domain of these VR vines where you can make super high quality stuff. And what do you do if you've got 200 frames? They don't necessarily have to be a linear sequence. What's cool on this is because they're all in memory, it's not a video decode, you can scrub back and forth. So you like freeze time, go forwards and backwards. It's a super power, it's awesome. <laughs> but I, if you know that and you say as a creator, all right, you have 300 frames of video, what do you do? You could do some interesting things. You could you could make, uh, you know, you could have 10 different little animation sequences that procedurally go between them. You could make your ultimate Zen garden with the wind blowing and sync it up with video. You could do a dancing mannequin thing that has just pieces of it uh, cut from the different stuff. So it's, again, comes back to that notion of limitations can be creatively inspiring in many ways. When you say, it's like, okay, yes, everybody with a distributed ray tracer, enough compute time can render anything they want, anything they can imagine and model. But if you say, all right, well, what can you do if you've got 300 frames? And that's when the people that have a lot of real creativity will come out and say, I think I can do something really awesome with that. And I'm I'm very much looking forward to seeing that. So I was I was thrilled with the whole end of the metaverse stuff. I mean, yes, it's not something that, you know, everybody's like, oh my gosh, I've never seen something like that before. But the people that, that actually go and see them, they usually wind up going, that looks really good. And it has some level of impact on them because many of them are very artistic. It's not just like, okay, look at the pixel density of this picture. They have, you know, there's something that they're conveying. There's something on an emotional content level, and that's uh, some value. If you think that quality in movement, uh, that would be already great. If you could render that kind of quality, but uh, in real time, uh, that would so, be really, really yeah, nice. Yeah, so that, that's where you're kind of seeing the future there, where at some point we're going to be able to have that quality rendered full time. And so Otoy has all this cool cloud rendering stuff that they do. And they've got some. They've done some hacks to like integrate it with Gear VR, like doing some specular uh, stuff with that. And and it's cool the cloud stuff. Like one of the things that I thought was awesome when uh, Jules mentioned this was when they were doing some of these animated, some of these light field rendering. They said at one point they were using half of Amazon's GPU cloud <laughs> for this. And but the idea is like, okay, this would have been impossible to do. This would have taken three years to render before. And now it's like, okay, it's they write a check and wait, you know, and wait a couple days, uh, and it comes through. So the idea of I um, like today. If we wanted to kind of go nuts for research purposes, you'd have to convince yourself for this. Like, it'd be possible to build a 16K display if you went to wafer scale integration of, like, imagine sort of uh, micro displays. Just kind of like, it would be one big wafer of micro displays tiled across it. And then you probably could set up a great big a whole rack of servers, make some fiber optic interface to be able to go ahead and drive 16K displays over a cable from something like that. And it would probably be possible, but I don't actually think we'd, you know, that's the type of thing companies with, uh, you know, far more money than cents would spend their time on, because I don't think you can actually get that much value out of it. But uh, what we need to do first is get, like, foveated rendering and gaze tracking solved really well, but then the idea of doing ray tracing on a closely coupled server clusters is kind of reasonable. It's not clear how that becomes a consumer sort of thing because yeah. it's like, okay, if you can yoke a thousand processors to uh, you know, to your needs there, it makes for a great demo at some point, but I don't see how that scales out all the way to, to a sort of a consumer level uh, you know, approach. But I do think in not too many years you have things where you have systems where you have much better than we've got right now in any of our GPUs that are reasonably streamed to cell phone sorts of displays. I think that we need to probably make better uh, wireless transport protocols instead of something like Miracast where you're layering H.264, your screen scraping on top of H.264, on top of IP, on top of 802.11. There's a lot of layers there and it works to just show a video 
video there, but it's not going to be kind of responsive and interactive. While I think it's very much possible to use the same low-level chips that you do for something like that to make a uh, a design for even VR streaming sort of approach where, by, so you don't use error correction, you just let the low persistence disappear for one frame and overbrite the frame after that. There's a lot of systems level things that are, are interesting possibilities because I don't think we ever will get to the point where you know, even 20 years out where you've got sunglass type systems that I uh, that have all the power of like even today's Titan X sort of uh, machines where the it's just not going to happen where you get that power. If you look at something like Google Glass, which is that form factor, it's got this puny little processor in it. And even if we even if we go up another order of magnitude, which we, we inevitably will get another order of magnitude before we start losing out on all the, the semiconductor scaling, mm. that's still a pretty crappy system. And even if you take the high end systems, in order of magnitude better, that still only puts you at a quarter of the performance of a high-end right. PC system. And those Otoy images were rendered at, those took hours of rendering on farms of systems. They're yeah. a long ways from real time on, you know, on any system at all. But that's taking the most pessimistic look at it. I, I am a believer in cleverness, and I think that, I, that there are a lot of these approaches like foliated rendering and doing things that are more biologically driven uh, for how we drive our rendering rather than just blindly rendering everything. I think that we will be able to get to things that perceptually look like that and, and have it in a mobile platform, probably driven by external computation. Whether it's computation in your pocket or on a remote so so far, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Have you have you been looking at night tracking uh, for for the for the It's impossible. It's 